Good morning children. I hope you are all fit and fine at home. In today's session, we will discuss chapter number 5, The Tiger's Claw. Actually, the author of the lesson is not mentioned in this text. But this is one of the short stories of Malgudi days written by the famous Indian writer R.K. Narayan. Okay? So, in this story, the narrator, who is the narrator? The person who describes or talks about the things that had happened. Okay, so the narrator here is visiting a place where he has to give lectures in a fertilizer company. And there, during his visit, he thinks of visiting his friend who is a station master. So he is going there and sitting and relaxing in the station master's room. And there the scene begins. So shall we start now? The Tiger's Claw I opened my eyes and saw at the door a tiger pushing himself in. It was a muddled moment for me, not being sure whether the dream was continuing or whether I was awake. I, at first, thought it was my friend, the station master, who was coming in. But my dream had fully prepared my mind. I saw the thing clearly against the starlit sky, tail wagging, growling, and above all, his terrible eyes gleaming through the dark. I understood the fertilizer company would have to manage without my lectures from the following day. The tiger himself was rather startled by the noise of the chair and stood hesitating. He saw me quite clearly in my corner and he seemed to be telling himself, my dinner is there ready, but let me first know what this clattering noise is about. All of a sudden, when the narrator opened his eyes, he saw a tiger pushing himself inside the room. The narrator says that it was a muddled moment. The meaning of muddled is confused. So what is the confusion here? The narrator was actually resting there. So he was confused whether it was a dream or it was something really happening. Okay. And in the beginning he thought, that his friend, the station master, was coming in. But the narrator could clearly see the tail wagging. What's the meaning of wagging? To move to and fro. And children you must have seen dogs wagging their tails when they are fed with something. Yeah. So the narrator could see the tiger's tail wagging and growling. Growling means you can see the, uh, the terrible sound, the scary sound of the tiger. And the eyes gleaming. Gleaming here means shining. And you must have seen maybe a cat or a dog when they stand in the dark. You can see only their eyes shining. Okay, in the same way here. The narrator could see the eyes of the tiger gleaming or shining in the dark. Looking at the, the tiger, the narrator decided that the fertilizer company would have to manage 
without his lecture why because he was very sure that the tiger would kill him so if the tiger kills him he can't go to the fertilizer company and he can't give the lecture there so he felt or he decided almost that the fertilizer company should do without his lecture the next day but at the same time the tiger also looked hesitant the tiger also looked little confused it was not confident whether to move forward or not why because he was little startled because when the narrator moved the furniture to hide himself the noise created had troubled or had confused the tiger so the tiger was hesitant and was confused to move forward it felt whether it would be safe or not for him to move forward the tiger could clearly see the narrator in the corner looking at the tiger the narrator felt that the tiger was saying that his dinner was ready there who was the dinner for the tiger it's no one but the narrator and he also felt that the tiger was thinking about the clattering noise what was the clattering noise the noise that was made by the furniture clattering here means the noise made by hard objects when they strike one another so here the tiger was confused and hesitant by the noise of the furniture and he felt confused and was little hesitant to move forward so children i hope you have understood the first paragraph so shall we move on to the second paragraph to see what's going to happen next let's start somehow wild animals are less afraid of beings than they are of pieces of furniture like chairs and tables i have seen circus men managing a whole menagerie with nothing more than a chair god gives us such recollections in order to save us at critical moments and as the tiger stood observing me and watching the chair i put out my hands and with a desperate string drew the table towards me and also the stool i sat with my back to the corner the table wedged in nicely with the corner i sat under it and the stool walled up another side while i dragged the table down a lot of things fell off it a table lamp a long knife and pins from my shelter i peeped at the tiger who was also watching me with interest evidently he didn't like his meal to be so completely shut out of sight so he cautiously advanced a step or two making a sort of rumbling noise in his throat which seemed to shake up the little station house my end was nearing i really pitied the woman whose lot it was to have become my wife when the narrator saw the tiger looking confused and hesitated 
he remembered that animals are more afraid of furniture than that of human beings now the narrator recalls that the circus men circus men means the ring masters who control the animals in a circus okay so he recalls that the circus men manage the menagerie menagerie here means the group of animals used to entertain people so he recalls or remembers that the circus men manage the menagerie with the single chair and here the narrator feels that god gives us such recollections recollections means to recall memories such recollections to save us in a critical situation by the time the narrator was in all these thought process the tiger was keenly observing the movements of the narrator and the chair the narrator had completely lost his hopes with desperate strength desperate here means you can say the feeling of hopelessness so without any hope the narrator pulled the table the chair and the stool towards him he sat in a corner and pulled the furniture to cover him up from all the other sides while pulling the table towards him a table lamp a long knife and some pins fell off the table the tiger was watching the narrator very carefully that he did not want to miss the sight of his meal what is the meal mentioned here it's nothing but the narrator so the tiger did not want to miss the sight of the narrator and then it started moving towards him very cautiously and with a rumbling noise rumbling means continuous and uh, deep sound so the tiger started moving towards the narrator very cautiously with a rumbling noise and the noise sounded as if the tiger would shake up the little station room so at this moment the narrator was very sure that he would be killed by the tiger and at this moment he was thinking of his wife and pitied her so can you imagine the scene children the narrator is sitting in the corner and trying to protect himself with the help of the furniture and the tiger waiting to attack the narrator can you imagine all this yes now let's move on to find or to see how the narrator is tackling the tiger shall we move on yes i held up the chair like a shield and flourished it and the tiger hesitated and fell back a step or two now once again we spent some time watching for each other's movements i held my breath and waited the tiger stood there fiercely waving its tail which sometimes struck the side walls and sent forth a thud he suddenly crouched down without taking his eyes off me and scratched the floor 
with his claws. He is sharpening them for me, I told myself. The little shack had already acquired the smell of a zoo. It made me sick. The tiger kept scratching the floor with his four paws. It was the most hideous sound you could think of. The narrator held the chair up as a shield. Now, looking at the chair, the tiger hesitated and moved one or two steps back because the tiger was worried looking at the chair and he didn't want to take any risk. So, it moved a step or two back. Now, both of them, the narrator and the tiger, spent time in watching each other's movements. The narrator was watching the tiger's movements and the tiger was watching the narrator's movement. The narrator was breathless. Looking at the narrator steadily, the tiger struck the side walls with its tail, making a heavy sound. The word thud means heavy sound, as if something is falling. Now, all of a sudden, the tiger crouched down. Crouched down means to have a position with their knees bent and the upper body brought forward and down. Look at the picture, children. You will get an idea of what is crouched, crouching. Okay, so the tiger crouched down, looking steadily at the narrator and was scratching the floor with its claws. It looked for the narrator as if the tiger was sharpening its claws for the narrator or to attack him. Already the narrator was very sick because of the sight. Along with that, the smell of the tiger made him feel so sick. He felt as if he was staying in a zoo because of the smell of the tiger. And the tiger kept on scratching the floor with his four paws. The narrator describes this scratching sound as the most hideous sound. What's the meaning of hideous? You can say extremely ugly or unpleasant or horrific or even you can say uh, terrible. So the narrator found this scratching sound as the most hideous sound. So children, I hope you all have understood the chapter till here. Am I right? Okay. So the remaining portion we will see in the next session. But before winding up, I will give you some questions. You please go through the lesson and try to answer the questions. Okay. Shall I? Right. The first question is, what is the meaning of the word muddled? What is the meaning of the word muddled? Question number two, list out the things that fell off the table when the narrator dragged the table towards him. Okay. And question three. Who was pitied by the narrator? Who was pitied by the narrator? Question 4. Mention the word used in the third paragraph which shows a heavy sound. 
in the third paragraph which shows a heavy sound okay and number 5 mention the word which denotes a group of animals okay fine so we will meet in the next session till then take care god bless you bye bye